Hi everyone, thanks for watching. One of the skills you should have as a manager is understanding how the financials work, and especially how the area that you are responsible for impacts the overall financials of the organization. Our agenda today is as follows. We'll walk through a restaurant example and talk about the value that financial tools bring, such as a P&L, and as always, I'll share takeaways. But first, we're gonna take a look at a sample P&L from accountingcoach.com. If you'll notice, P&Ls are over a period of time as indicated in line three of the header. They are divided into two sections. The top section is the income section. Here, all the money that comes into the organization is broken out into various categories, and all the items are added together for a total. The second section, or bottom half, are the expenses, which is any money going out of the organization. This is also categorized into multiple line items. And the very last line is net income. As you can see, subtracting 90,000 from 108, or 108,000, leaves you with a bottom line income of 18,000. Now let's take a look at the restaurant example on the next slide. A P&L is a profit and loss statement, also called an income statement. Here, we'll walk through the two high-level categories of a P&L from the perspective of a restaurant manager. First, income is called revenue. Examples of the categories of an income statement that would constitute revenue are dining in, carry out, catering, and gift cards. You could break any category into the form of payment like cash or credit card, and you could even further dissect each category. So for patrons dining into a restaurant, you could categorize them by time of day, meaning breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and even further so with walk-ins and registrations. Expenses include any money paid out of the organization. Sticking with the restaurant example, that would be salaries and wages, the mortgage or rent for the space, all types of insurances like property or liability insurance, utilities, such as water, electricity, trash pickup, and so on, and ingredients to make the food and beverage items. As we saw on the previous slide, the bottom line is revenue minus expenses. We have a profit when we bring more money in than we pay out in a given period, and we take a loss when we are paying out more than we are bringing in. Businesses can't operate in this state very long, so it's important to forecast your income and expenses in order to best manage big swings. Believe it or not, P&Ls are useful not only professionally, but they are a tool to use in your personal life to help manage your own personal finances. As a manager, there are several advantages to understanding P&Ls, including how your functional area manages its finances, how corporate decisions are made, and with this knowledge, oftentimes you're given more responsibilities, which leads to more money in your pocket. For disclosure purposes, I am not a financial advisor. I'm here to explain a P&L. Okay. If you start to use a P&L for your own personal finances, you'll never be one of those people who doesn't have any money or wonders where it all goes. You can create your own file in Excel. This example assumes that you have an annual salary of just under $50,000. Across the top are each of the 12 months. I have the first row in black, which is all money coming in, otherwise known as your revenue. Net income is the money you get paid after taxes and any other deductions. If you have more than one job or income source, you can break this out into multiple line items. All other lines you see in red are your expenses. If you're paying this, congratulations and welcome to being an adult. You'll notice the first line is your savings. The calculation is set at 10%, but feel free to adjust for your personal needs. This line is for you to pay yourself. If you don't do it in a separate account, nobody else will. Pay yourself first. This line is to begin to build your net worth. If you keep all of your money in your checking account, you are more likely to spend it. The next line is your, sa your savings emergency, also automatically calculated at 
What if your car breaks down or your refrigerator stops working? The last thing you want to do is take your life savings and spend it on a broken car, right? So create a separate space for your emergency savings. My recommendation is to have a goal for this emergency fund, then stop funding it when this goal is met. You can see what your expenses are by looking at this file, so have enough saved to manage all of your expenses for one year. Next are your home or living expenses. You want to have a line item for each. Your mortgage or rent, your cable or streaming service, water bill, electric bill, gas bill, homeowners or renters insurance, groceries, etc. Take the average bill and populate these cells. For months that you know you may use more, like heat in November and December or January and February, increase that amount so you can properly forecast. The more accurate this file is, the better you can manage your money. Next are your car expenses. Insurance, gas for your car, if you use a car service. Notice that this file assumes you don't have a car payment, so you have to plan for that accordingly. Then you have expenses for your phone, fun money like grabbing a bite to eat with friends, um, thinking about spring break or going on a trip, and then you have credit cards that you would have to pay off as well. I will advise that if you can't pay off all of your credit cards in full by the end of each month, you shouldn't have a credit card. That means you're spending more than you're bringing in, and that's the fastest way to go into debt. The bottom line is your income minus your expenses. You'll notice that the if the line is black, you spent less than you brought in, which is great. If the line is red, it means you need to be careful and you spent more than you brought in. On the far right, you'll have the annual column that totals all of the rolls for the year. The takeaways for this video are, you don't have to be a math expert to understand a P&L. Using P&Ls for personal use not only can help you manage your own money, but sharpen your P&L skills for your next promotion. This skill alone can help you build personal wealth. It builds your interview skills. If you're asked if you've ever managed a P&L without having direct experience, you can intelligently talk to how to use the tool and how it can be applied in business. And going forward, you should have more confidence in your own personal finance and income statement knowledge.